corners, love them or hate them, corners are a crucial part to mountain biking and something that nobody can say that they've mastered. I mean, even the best riders in the world get coached on corners, so why shouldn't we do a little practice? I mean, after all, practice makes better cornering because I don't believe in perfection. Today, we're gonna touch on a couple of basic styles of corners and how we can approach them with confidence to level up our riding a bit. But don't worry, we're gonna build on today's lessons in the future. We're gonna offer up some more technical tips for harder corners later on. Now, I like to think of a corner as something you're not physically turning the bars on, you're rather leaning the bike left or right to create a nice arc. Now, a great place to start feeling confident separating yourself from the bike and getting that bike body separation is just some nice flat ground, maybe a park or the road out in front of your house. So you don't need any special equipment for this little drill I'm about to do. I just found some nice bright rocks on the side of the trail so I can distinguish them from the dirty ground. And we're gonna lay them down in a nice little semicircle. Now I find I turn worse when I'm going to the right. So I'm gonna practice that one first today. I'm gonna enter on the left side of the rocks practice leaning my bike to the right and I've got a nice little run out. Play around with arm movements and pedal positions because the more you practice here, the better equipped you'll be when you get out on trail. Let's be clear y'all, not all corners are created equally, thus different techniques can be implemented as needed. But before we get stuck in, I want you to think about where you ride most often so you can make the best use out of these examples. First up, we're gonna talk about flat corners. Now they're my least favorite corners, believe it or not, because a lot of the times there's nothing to push against and you've got this kind of loose surface area that's really sketchy, not confidence inspiring. So these corners usually require a lot more bike body separation because you don't want gravity to pull the bike and the body into the berm. Now with most corners, you're gonna wanna do your braking before you actually get into the corner. That way, as you exit, you're picking up speed and carrying it on to the next feature. Now this corner in particular, it's quite a narrow area, so I'm gonna take my turn all the way out here to the edge of the trail, making my radius as big as possible, least chance of jackknifing. Up next, luckily we've just got a straight little section of trail, lets us to get neutral on our bike again, eyes are up, ready to send it. All right, I think it's time to go slap a couple corners, but first, real quick, body position. Three things I think about when riding all the time are to stay low on your bike. For me, a good reference is chin over stem, and that way we know that our body weight's equally distributed over the front wheel and the rear wheel. Also, looking where you wanna go. I know it sounds crazy, but it actually helps and it will make a big difference. And lastly, leaning the bike. So corners coming up, we wanna make sure we're leaning the bike into the corner, keeping our body weight separated. Low look lean, it's as easy as that. All right, that is enough about flat corners. Let's talk about berms because those are the corners we all dream about and I'm pretty sure that's why bike parks were invented, but don't quote me on that, let's do this. Body position in a bermed corner is pretty similar to what we just did in the flat corners, but it's ever so slightly different because usually in a bermed corner, you can enter with more speed. You've got a nice wall here to push the bike and the suspension into without the fear of sliding out into the gravel. Ideally, when riding, the bike will be a similar angle to the bermed wall and the rider will be more upright. The bike body separation is usually more subtle with the more speed you carry. Thus, the less aggressive the movements need to be. Small, subtle movements can go a long way. So when I'm practicing, I like to exaggerate the technique so that when I'm just riding along, it feels more natural. All right, y'all, if you're still struggling with corners and finding traction after that little lesson, then I've got a few pro tips on your bike setup. The first place I'd start is with a slightly lower tire pressure. After that, you might opt for a wider tire to provide more contact with the ground, a softer compound tire to literally grip the surface, and maybe even a knobbier tire to avoid those slick and slidey moments. 
Thank you guys so much for joining me on the trails today. I hope you enjoyed it. Those were a few little lessons in cornering, some tips we can all use to practice and become better. But take it from me, cornering is a lifelong learning process. Stay tuned for a follow-up video where we're gonna hit some corners on steeper and more technical terrain. And don't forget to subscribe for more riding tutorial content.